Oklahoma Gardening is a production of the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the land-grant mission of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University, dedicated to improving the quality of life of the citizens of Oklahoma through research-based information. Underwriting assistance for our program is provided by the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping to keep Oklahoma green and growing. Grab your pen and paper. Today on the Best of Oklahoma Gardening, we are reviewing numerous plants that will be great for any garden. From shrubs and trees to annuals and perennials, David Hillock and I will give you all the details. I've got another great drought tolerant plant I want to share with you. This is called Gray Santalina. We have it growing here in our rock garden because it does like good rocky and good drainage soils. So you can see here, it's got that gray foliage and usually that's kind of a telltale sign of a plant that is drought tolerant. And so it can handle our Oklahoma heats and sometimes those drier soil conditions that we might experience as we head into those summer months. Now the foliage itself actually kind of reminds me of an Arizona cypress. It's kind of got that grayish green uh, color that it brings to the garden landscape. And you can see up close it has kind of a, a fuzzy texture to it. What's unique about this is it, it's actually the species um, comes from the Greek word meaning dwarf cypress. So it, it doesn't surprise me that it sort of reminds me of the Arizona cypress. Um, and you can see how it kind of spreads and it'll create these kind of rolling mounds of this sort of like a cloud like effect in your landscape. Now in late spring, it also will um, put up these flower buds. Now these flower buds, while it is in the Asteraceae family and they look like kind of like the little buds or the eyes of a daisy, that's because they are sort of that eye of the daisy or the eye of the mum because they lack the ray florets that you often see around the mum or the daisy. Instead they just have these button-like flowers that sort of polka dot the landscape. But that contrast between the bright yellow and the gray foliage makes a nice addition to any landscape. Now, if you're not really interested in the gray color in your landscape, there also is a green uh, Santalina to check out. Both of these are hardy from zone six to 10. And again, a great addition in any Oklahoma garden. Our Oklahoma proven shrub for 2022 is the button bush, Cephalanthus occidentalis. This is a native shrub. It is found growing throughout all of Oklahoma except the panhandle. And actually it's found growing near water. It's usually found growing along the, the borders, the banks of, of lakes, rivers, streams, ponds. So it likes water. And in fact, it'll tolerate wet swampy soils, compacted soils. It just doesn't like to get really dry. So make sure you have it in a good spot that gets lots of moisture, or that you can provide some moisture at least during the hot, dry part of the summer. So this is a really nice plant. It has bright, glossy green foliage on it. Um, doesn't really have much of a fall color, but in early summer, this plant developed some really cool uh, pincushion-like flower clusters. And uh, we have some, this one's about done. This one has just finished blooming, but we used have some still uh, on campus and around town that are still blooming. Um, they are white clusters. Once they mature, um, the seed actually is a source for, in, at least in its native habitat, becomes a source for ducks and other waterfowl. These seeds uh, structures can also persist on the plant. Uh, some of them can be a kind of a reddish, reddish brown color um, and can be somewhat attractive later on in the season as well. Now the flowers are nicely scented and they are very attractive to butterflies, bees, uh, hummingbirds and other pollinators. In fact, when this thing is in bloom, it's usually just swarming with all kinds of insects and it's considered a good uh, honey plant as well. So there are several landscape selections that are now available. The species can grow 
up to 12 foot high. So it's a multi-stem shrub, get, can reach up to 12 foot high. And most of the garden selections are smaller, more compact, dwarf type. So an old cultivar uh, that's been around for quite a while is called Sputnik. And that was actually found growing in the wild in Oklahoma by our uh, horticulturist, Steve Biebrick. And it has pale pink flowers or light pink flowers. Um, and it gets about almost the same size as the species. A newer one uh, called Fiber Optics is uh, more compact, gets about more like five to six foot high and wide. Another recent cultivar is called Sugar Shack. It's also a dwarf, gets about three to four, maybe five foot high and wide. Um, and that one has kind of the reddish brown uh, fruits that per persist onto the plant. So again, this is a great plant, uh, great for a native planting, a woodland area, especially, you know, wet areas and rain gardens. Um, but it is a great landscape plant as long as you can provide some supplemental water to it during the hot and driest part of the summer. We're back here in our All America Selection Annual Display Garden. And one of the things I always like doing at the end of the season is to kind of showcase some of the annuals that have done really well. Well, today I want to look at the vincas that we have here, um, also known as the periwinkles. Periwinkles have long been in the home landscape with their pinwheel flower that is just a traditional look, a classic look that we often see in the landscape. But these particular annuals that I want to highlight today are in the Mega Bloom series. Um, and so this particular one here in front of me, you can see it has that traditional periwinkle look where it's got kind of that pinwheel floral display and the white eye to the center of it. This one is actually known as the Orchid Halo as part of that Mega Bloom series. There's also a um, pink halo, which has a softer pink color to it and also the white eye to it as well. Now, if you want to go with an even more classic look, there is one called polka dot that has your traditional white flower. And it almost looks like somebody's gone around with a paintbrush counting the flowers as each center has just a drop of hot pink right in the center of it, really attracting those pollinators to the center of that flower. Now each one of them are a couple of inches wide, so that's really what sets this um, Mega Bloom series apart from some of your traditional periwinkles, is the fact that they are such large flowers and that they are held up on a very compact, tidy plant as well, so you don't have to worry about them flopping but they're gonna to continue to provide flowers throughout the season. One of the other things that this series has really been bred for also is heat and humidity tolerance, which as you know, we live in Oklahoma and we are well familiar with heat and humidity. So it's nice to have an annual that's gonna be able to handle that. And as you can see later in the season, um, it is still disease and pest free. And so we're doing good there. It does attract plenty of pollinators. We've got a lot of stuff flying around us right now. So if you're looking to add a a periwinkle into your garden and want to put a twist on an old favorite, try looking at the Mega Bloom series that comes in this orchid halo, pink halo, or polka dot. Our Oklahoma proven annual for 2022 is the coleus. Now, coleus is a time-honored foliage plant. It's been around for decades, and over the decades, they've actually released hundreds of cultivars. And they continue to, with the breeding process and improving them, uh, there's all kinds of leaf shapes and forms and colors. They grow from six inches tall to nice, large, rounded, 30-inch, 36-inch bushy plants. They are just awesome. So way back, um, you know, several decades ago, they actually were considered and most prized for shade for shady areas. Uh, then some some time ago, they came out with the sun coleus, and they've bred into them uh, more uh, light tolerance, so sun tolerance. And so now uh, we have dozens of cultivars that grow really well out in full sun, and they are actually one of the best foliage plants we have for Oklahoma. Now, these are plants that don't like to dry out. So it is a plant you're gonna to have to keep consistently moist throughout the summer. Um, but other than that, they're really easy to grow. Minor pest problems once in a while, um, but they're pretty tough overall. So uh, 
the breeders have, uh, again, like I said, they, they continue to improve, the, improve their performance. Uh, one of the things that they've kind of bred into them is, is less flowering or later flowering because we don't typically want them to flower. So most of the time we're gonna come in and we're gonna pinch that flower out so that we can keep it nice and bushy and clean. So if you're looking for a great annual for full sun or maybe part shade, or even as an indoor house plant, coleus might be a great selection for you. a plant that looks like it's straight out of a children's storybook, Jack and the Beanstalk, but it's not actually called that. It is called the Wooly Morning Glory. And I wanted to show you this find because it's one that gets a lot of attention here at the Botanic Gardens at OSU. It is a tropical and it's probably a good thing it's a tropical because you can see how monstrous it gets by the end of the season. Now we actually just planted two small four inch pots in this container earlier in the spring after we're past any frost so after april 15th we planted two small pots and you can see how big it's gotten by the end of the season now the reason why you really grow woolly morning glory is because of this foliage it's just beautiful foliage you can see actually this is kind of one of the smaller leaves but how big these leaves will actually get they just have a nice kind of emerald green color to them but what's really nice is the underneath has this silvery sheen to it so when the wind is really blowing the leaves are sort of dancing and you see some of that uh, silver uh, underneath kind of fleck around and stuff like that and so the other thing too is you'll notice that it is a vine it doesn't have tendrils like you would necessarily see where it kind of sends these uh, little vines out but just the ends of them if i can find one here the ends of them will twine around and they'll even twine back up on themselves. So they are pretty kind of woody actually. So when we have to clean this vine off at the end of the season, we have to go in here with loppers and actually cut it out of our trellis just because it is such a sort of a woody texture to it. Um, but that gives it strength to sort of really support it. Now you do want to actually give it something to climb on, um, but it will grow up to like 20 feet so you can really take it up to help cover and camouflage anything temporarily for the season now again this is called wood, woolly morning glory which may make you think it's going to flower and it does but really again we're growing it for the foliage because the flowers don't come on until late late in the season and in fact if you see right up here we've got some buds that are just starting to form here as we head into fall um, and so this is sort of a showy kind of calyx um, but inside we've got the flower buds that are in there um, and so when it does bloom it will be kind of a purple color to it again your traditional morning glory purple flower so depending on when winter decides to show up or that first frost um, we may not actually get the flowers in it um, at all so again we're growing it for the foliage but the flowers is just a bonus so again this is woolly morning glory and a great tropical plant to grow in your garden Today I want to show you the plant that we chose for our perennial for the Oklahoma Proven Program for 2022. Uh, this is a great plant. Uh, the genus is Heuchera uh, or coral bells. Um, there's actually several species. They are native to North America. But this is a fun plant. It's very colorful. Over the last decade or two, the breeders have done a lot of work with this plant and uh, really, really improved it. And there's all kinds of different cultivars and varieties out there. Uh, this one here you can see has a nice, under, the underside of the leaf is a bright purple uh, and the upper side of the leaf uh, is a dark green with kind of a silvery cast between the veins. And then it also has this light airy flowering stem with little tiny pinkish bell shaped flowers. But they come in a wide variety of color. There's some really dark purple colors, um, some orangish colored varieties and some really bright ones like uh, a chartreuse or lime colored. Um, they do very well in shady conditions and semi-shady conditions. Some of them will tolerate full sun if you provide adequate 
moisture to them. Now the darker colored varieties, they tend to tolerate more sunlight than the lighter ones do, the, the chartreuse and lime colored ones. You know, sometimes you can put them out in full sun, uh, but make sure you have adequate water available to them. The lighter colored ones have a tendency to burn up in the sun, so they're best provided in the shade. Because of that light, bright green color, they really stand out nicely in the shade as well. Now the flower colors, they come in a few a range of colors as well. They can be from red to pink to white. You can see that this is kind of the habit of hookeras or coral bells. They grow in a, in a clump habit. They don't spread a lot. Um, so, you know, you can create a really nice ground cover by placing them fairly close together. Now some of the plants are more drought tolerant than others. Uh, again, depending on the parentage of the hybrids that are, that are out there. Um, they do have a very shallow fibrous root system. So you do want to be sure to provide uh, moisture, especially during the driest times of the year. I mean, you want to make sure that uh, the crown isn't too exposed during the winter months. It's a good idea to uh, mulch around them during the winter um, because otherwise, uh, if they're exposed, they're, the, the, frost, the frost and freeze heaving of the soil will push them right out of the ground and expose the crown of the plant, which can cause some winter damage. So if you're looking for a great perennial, um, long lasting, some of them can be, per, um, can be evergreen and some of them are deciduous depending on the, the year, the, the, the severity of our, our winters as well as the cultivar. But uh, they're great long lasting perennials that provide all kinds of color for you. With my current lifestyle as a mother of two young kids, I always am appreciating perennials that are very low maintenance. And I want to mention one that I discovered several years ago that's still one of my favorites. And that is this plant here in front of me called Verbena bonariensis, also known as Verbena on a stick. And you can see how it gets its name because it has these purple tubular clusters of flowers that are on these long pedicels or sticks in essence. You can see though what I really like about this is because of those tubular flowers it does attract a lot of pollinators so you'll find a lot of butterflies and moths and even an occasional hummingbird coming to this plant and it really elevates those nectar flowers right above your eyes and so it's almost like you can see those moths and butterflies right there without having to bend down and look too much. Now the other thing that it does in a landscape is it actually doubles your impact in your garden space. So you can see all of these flowers are well above the ground. While it does have a little bit of vegetation on it, most of the vegetation is really low. And so you can actually underplant this with other perennials. So you can see we've got it underplanted here with some Rubecchia. And the contrast between the purple and the yellow makes a really nice impact. But for the same square footage in your garden, you're getting twice the floral display here. Now the other thing about this plant is it is hardy to zone 7a. So for most of Oklahoma it is going to be hardy. Um, if you're north of that you can use it as an annual as it will continue to produce these flowers on these um, densely branched um, pedestals throughout the summertime. So you're going to get a lot of flowers all summer long. If you um, do grow it as a perennial, you should be aware it will reseed. However, I'm not promoting anything that is a, what I would say a garden thug. You don't have to worry about this taking over your garden anytime soon. What it does though is it will reseed on occasion and I often think it's really a nice surprise just seeing where it might pop up in the garden and it sort of allows that ebb and flow um, and the kind of natural effect and design of your garden to come about. So you can see right here we actually have one that's just kind of popped up on the outside of the rock so it sort of softens that edge of our path but it's not going to be any problem that you can't easily control if you feel the need to. Now when we look at the leaves you'll see some of the vegetation it is up on these um, taller stems but like I said most of it is down lower. The leaves are serrate and they're really rough and so that kind of allows it to be a little more drought tolerant. It's not like a soft tissue um, vegetation so that just kind of holds in some of that moisture a little bit well. These stems are going to hold up fine and our strong Oklahoma winds are really sturdy. It works well in either a perennial garden, a pollinator garden, or even a container. However, with these stems getting anywhere from four to five feet tall, that might be a little intimidating and overwhelming for some spaces. And for that, I have another solution for you. So here you can see 
see we have another Verbena bonariensis, and this actually was the 2022 All-America Selection, one of their winners for the ornamental category on the national level. And this particular hybrid has been named Vanity. And you can see what's so aesthetically pleasing about this hybrid is the fact that it's going to remain more compact, getting a height of only about two and a half feet tall. But yet it still offers all of the same great features of the traditional uh, verbena on a stick as it lifts those flowers high above um, that canopy, kind of giving it that area effect and allowing you to still layer it in the garden. So if you're looking for an easy, low maintenance perennial, try Verbena bonariensis or Verbena on a stick. Today we want to show you the tree that we have chosen for the Oklahoma Proven Program for 2022. And that is the ginkgo. Uh, this is a fun tree. I love it. It's one of my favorites. It's kind of a unique tree because it is one of a kind. So the genus is ginkgo and the species is ginkgo biloba and that's it. There is no other species within the genus ginkgo. The other cool thing about this is they have found fossils of the leaves that date back to what they think is maybe 150 million years ago. It is a native to China, so it's not a native of ours, but it is a very tough tree. Uh, it tolerates a wide variety of soil conditions. It's a great urban or street tree because it tolerates compacted soils and dry soils quite well. Um, just really needs well-drained soils uh, or pretty well-drained soils. So you don't want it sitting in water. But other than that, this is a pretty tough tree. Uh, pretty much pest free, um, good clean, beautiful foliage. Um, it's called biloba because if you look at the leaf, um, you can see that it's kind of split in two, creating two lobes. It's a nice fan shaped leaf and the veins of the leaves are almost parallel to each other. Um, so it's bright, bright green during the summer. Um, and then in the fall, it actually turns a bright yellow color, which is really cool. Now this is a dioecious tree, meaning there's a male and female form of the tree. Um, it's usually a good idea to choose a male form um, to avoid the nasty fruit that the female can produce. Um, they're actually a large fleshy cone and when they, fall, you know, when they ripen and fall to the ground they're really stinky and messy. So usually it's a good idea to choose one that we know is a male form of the, of the species. Um, if you go into the garden center and just buy a a ginkgo biloba or ginkgo, or it's also called maidenhair tree, um, and there's no designation of what it could be. Um, you may not know what it is until it matures like 15, 20 years later. I mean, it takes a long time for it to mature, uh, which is another thing that's kind of nice about this tree to some degree is it's very slow grower. Uh, this tree here um, that we're standing under, uh, it is it's been in here for at least 25 years, and um, I'm guessing it's probably only about 30 feet tall now. So it's a slow grower, which again can be a plus or a minus. Because it's slow, you, know, you don't really have to worry much about it getting out of control and really have to worry about pruning it or anything like that. So if you're looking for a great tree that is easy to grow, trouble-free, has wonderful summer foliage and really bright yellow fall color, then this might be a great tree for you. A lot of times we think about trees during the summertime when they provide us with a reprieve during our hot Oklahoma summers. And also in the wintertime, we're grateful for our evergreens because of the green that we know will soon return to our landscape. However, today I want to show you a tree that is still providing color even in the middle of winter, and that is the coral bark Japanese maple. As you can see, it got its name from this bright red color that it gets on its new growth that is only intensified as we go into those cooler winter um, months. Now this tree, it does like dappled shade. So especially in hotter climates like we are here in Oklahoma. So you can see it's planted here on OSU's campus on the east side of several more mature trees, um, just east of Theta Pond. Those trees are gonna provide it with that dappled shade. However, it is gonna get a fair bit of morning sun, but be protected in those hot afternoon hours. 
The other thing is that, that shade that's provided by the canopy of the other trees will also kind of protect it from the harsh drying winds that we often experience here in Oklahoma. Now we don't have to worry about the canopy of those other trees too much because this tree is going to stay a moderate size of about 20 feet tall by 20 feet wide. As you can see, it's got color in the wintertime, but once it starts leafing out, it's going to have more of a light green lobed traditional Japanese maple leaf. Now we're going to continue to get color with it in the fall as those light green leaves turn to a more of a golden yellow color. Now this tree is better suited for eastern to central Oklahoma as it does like an acidic soil that is moist yet well drained. Now while this tree isn't suited for all of Oklahoma, sometimes the bark is just as important as the bite. Next week on Oklahoma Gardening, we look at the top two crops in the garden. To find out more information about show topics as well as recipes, videos, articles, fact sheets, and other resources, including a directory of local extension offices, be sure to visit our website at oklahomagardening.okstate.edu. Join in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find this entire show and other recent shows as well as individual segments on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. Tune in to our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel to watch segments from previous hosts. Oklahoma Gardening is produced by the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University. The Botanic Garden at OSU is home to our studio gardens, and we encourage you to come visit this beautiful Stillwater gem. We would like to thank our generous underwriter, the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. Additional support is also provided by Pond Pro Shop, Greenleaf Nursery and the Garden Day View Plants, the Tulsa Garden Center at Woodward Park, the Oklahoma Horticultural Society, Smart Pot, and the Tulsa Garden Club. 